Almost everyone likes to talk about conspiracy theories and scandals. Whether there's truth in it or just made up stories with no significant evidence, many love nosing around and discussing different angles for each incident. But we're sure that anything that has gate in it is big news everyone will remember for years. Keep watching till the end of this video to see why Ocean Gate and Gate incidents are never good. Ocean Gate On June 16th, the Ocean Gate Titan submersible set off to explore the underwater remains of the Titanic with five passengers on board. Through its descent, communication suddenly stopped and the submersible failed to resurface. After days of media frenzy, Officials announced the tragic implosion of the submersible and the loss of all lives on board. Conspiracy theorists quickly connected the Ocean Gate incident and the infamous Rothschild family. They extend the long-standing conspiracy theory that the Rothschilds were responsible for the sinking of the Titanic. But the news spin to this theory suggested that the Rothschilds sabotaged the Titan expedition to prevent unearthing the real cause behind the Titanic sinking. The theorists pointed out that David de Rothschild, a member of the Rothschild family, had been appointed to the Ocean Gate Board of Directors a decade ago. They suggested that the Rothschild family financed the submarine and influenced its implosion. The conspiracy theory soon spread like wildfire across social media, gaining traction through the posts of influential far-right personalities like Stu Peters. One post linked the Rothschilds to Isidore Strauss. The theory assumes that Strauss opposed the Rothschilds' plan to establish the Federal Reserve Bank, leading to his demise on the Titanic. Watergate Scandal On June 17, 1972, a seemingly ordinary burglary set the stage for a huge political scandal. The target was none other than the headquarters of the Democratic National Committee, housed in the Watergate complex in Washington, D.C. The culprits were five men four of whom had previously been involved in CIA operations against Fidel Castro, and one was James W. McCord Jr., the security chief of Nixon's committee to re-elect the president. Their objective was to wiretap the phones and steal crucial documents. However, their plans were messed up when a security guard discovered their break-in. The connection between the burglars and Nixon's re-election campaign wasn't immediately apparent, but the ties emerged as investigations continued. The discovery of a phone number associated with the White House among the burglars' possessions and the tracing of funds found on the burglars back to CRP began to paint a picture of a highly orchestrated political conspiracy. Nixon publicly asserted that his staff had no involvement in the incident and deemed the break-in a third-rate burglary attempt. However, behind the assurances, a desperate effort was underway to cover up the connection to the White House. A sneaky operation involving top Nixon aides like White House counsel John Dean was launched with two primary objectives manipulate the FBI's investigation and ensure the burglar's silence. However, their efforts failed when the acting FBI director, Patrick Gray, alerted Nixon about the interference from his staff, leading to the continuation of the investigation. The attempts to silence the burglars proved successful initially, with the help of substantial hush money and the promise of pardon. Yet, the truth was still revealed even as Nixon won the November 1972 election by a landslide. As the Watergate investigation gained momentum, the cover-up operation led by Nixon's aides began to crumble. Under mounting pressure, key figures, including John Dean, began cooperating with the investigators. His 245-page statement exposed the extent of the cover-up operation, involving several high-ranking officials, including Nixon. It was also revealed that Nixon secretly recorded all Oval Office conversations. A lengthy legal battle for the tapes happened, with Nixon claiming executive privilege to resist handing them over. Due to public outcry and mounting legal pressure, Nixon was ordered by the Supreme Court to surrender the tapes. When the tapes were finally released, they provided damning evidence of Nixon's direct involvement in the Watergate cover-up operation. Nixon faced a grim option, resign or face impeachment. On August 8, 1974, in the face of almost certain impeachment, Nixon announced his resignation, a first for a U.S. president. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. Clone Gate Rumors about Putin using body doubles aren't new. They have been a part of Russian folklore for years. However, the Russian president himself confirmed in an interview with the TASS news agency that he was offered the opportunity to use a body double for public appearances during the peak of Russia's fight against terrorism. The core of these conspiracy theories often lies in the tiniest details of Putin's pictures over the years. Conspiracy theorists claim to have identified multiple individuals posing as the Russian president. These claims are usually based on apparent discrepancies in his appearance, such as differences in the shape of the ear or the occasional absence of a small mole on his face. 
Adding to the intrigue, Dritten Hody, a professor of international relations, suggested in an interview that using a Sozi, a lookalike or double, could be possible, considering Putin's previous career as a KGB officer and the war-induced paranoia. Theories about Putin's health, his possible death, and the use of body doubles have been circulating widely. Some believe that Putin may have had plastic surgery, while others speculate that the Russian president suffers from a serious illness. The cloning theory got an unexpected twist when Russia's defense minister proposed cloning a group of ancient warriors. Although the proposal was unrelated to Putin, it opened up a new dimension to the cloning debate. A Russian social media video fueled speculation about Putin using a lookalike for trips he didn't want to take. The video suggested a lookalike. Putin's only trip was the newly occupied territory of Mariupol. However, the credibility of this claim remains in question. Climate Gate in November 2009, a sneaky act laid the foundation for what would become known as the Climate Gate controversy. Multiple emails and computer files held by the Climatic Research Unit CRU, at the University of East Anglia were secretly accessed and distributed online. As the news broke, it sparked immediate interest, especially among climate change skeptics. The stolen emails have private conversations among climate scientists detailing their research, data analysis, and deliberations about scientific conferences. When viewed out of context, these exchanges were interpreted by critics as evidence of data manipulation and suppression of opinions. For instance, in one email, Jones mentioned using Mike's trick to hide the decline, phrases translated as an attempt to hide a drop in global temperatures. Similarly, an email from Kevin Trenberth expressing the inability to account for the lack of warming at a particular time was misinterpreted by critics. Climate scientists were subjected to cruel attacks and death threats as the controversy gained momentum. Professor Phil Jones, the head of CRU, bore the weight of this aggression. His personal and professional life was invaded, with detractors knocking on his neighbor's door and sending him abusive emails. The pressure took its toll on Jones, who described the experience as having a nervous breakdown. In the wake of the controversy, multiple investigations were launched into the allegations of scientific misconduct. Eight committees conducted through probes and found no evidence of fraud or deliberate data manipulation. Ukraine Gate. The Ukraine gate revolves around President Trump, who has found himself at the center of an impeachment inquiry, a situation that the two-year Russia scandal failed to cause. Allegations say that Trump applied pressure on Ukraine's newly elected president in a bid to investigate a political rival in return for American aid. Trump's role in the Ukraine saga severely contrasts his involvement in the Russia scandal. In the latter, the authorities were investigating how Trump interacted with the Kremlin operatives-led campaign to influence the 2016 presidential election in his favor. While Trump did welcome and encourage this effort, he was not the main character in the scandal. However, with the release of a detailed summary of a conversation between Trump and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, the American leader was placed front and center in this drama. One of the key elements that set the Ukraine scandal apart from the Russiagate scandal is the policy shift done by Trump to his call with Zelensky. According to reports, a week before the call, Trump ordered his acting chief of staff to delay a $400 million aid package for Ukraine. This delay in aid could have been part of an effort to pressure Zelensky to supply political dirt. I love WikiLeaks, Trump declared in October 2016, showing his support for the organization that released a cache of emails hacked from Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta's account. However, his attitude towards whistleblowers changed dramatically after he took the presidency. From ordering the arrest of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to demanding the identification of leakers in his White House, Trump's stance on whistleblowers transformed from admiration to disdain. 